Welcome to History of Health Information Technology in the U.S., History of CPOE and E-Prescribing. This is Lecture A, History of CPOE. This lecture presents the history of Computerized Physician Order Entry Systems, or CPOE. We will begin by talking about CPOE, which is most commonly found in the hospital setting. The objectives for this unit, History of CPOE and E-Prescribing, are to discuss the evolving capabilities of CPOE and E-Prescribing systems and to discuss the impact of these systems on patient safety and quality. Before we begin thinking about the history of CPOE, we will define this term later in this lecture, let's briefly consider what life was like during medieval times. The Middle Ages, as they are sometimes called, were more than 500 years ago. Life was very different. Certainly, there were no computers and no Internet connections. Patients during that time would seek the care of a physician who might have decided that a prescription compound, such as a medication, an herb, or some other concoction, was warranted. The patient would then have to travel across the village in order to present the doctor's prescription to a chemist. The chemist and the doctor were literate. Thus, the chemist could decipher the written note from the physician. Chances are, the patient could not. The chemist needed to prepare the physician's order to exact specifications and frequently had to mix a variety of compounds. Any error in interpreting the doctor's notes, such as misreading the type of medicine ordered, the amount prescribed, or the frequency of ingestion, could potentially harm the patient. Strangely enough, in many ways this process hasn't changed much in modern times. Certainly there's a lot more science underpinning the practice of medicine and pharmacy, but certain facts still remain. For example, until very recently, prescriptions were still written using Latin abbreviations which many patients do not understand. Second, the pharmacist still needed to, quote-unquote, decode the physician's handwriting, which at times could be difficult because legible penmanship is not something that's taught in medical schools. The image on your screen is an example of the sort of prescription that has been written in modern times that has caused harm to patients. In this particular case, a drug called Isardil, which is a nitrate used for angina, was prescribed. The pharmacist filled the medication as Plindil, a calcium channel blocker used for hypertension. After taking the medication every six hours as instructed, the patient suffered a heart attack and later died. By the way, Q6 hours is the Latin abbreviation for every six hours. Needless to say, the physician was sued because it was very difficult to interpret what his intention was when he wrote that prescription. The pharmacist was also sued because he dispensed Plindel at more than the maximum dose of 10 milligrams. And the pharmacy was sued because its computer system did not catch the excessive dose. All three errors made by the physician, the pharmacist, and the pharmacy could have been prevented with the use of CPOE. So now, let's define it. CPOE is a system enabling physicians to enter orders through a computer system. Orders include prescribing drugs, like we have already discussed, but can also include ordering lab tests or radiology tests, such as x-rays or CAT scans, and ordering services such as physical therapy sessions that a patient may require. Technically, orders could also include referrals to other physicians or locations of care. The acronym CPOE is used collectively to refer to several terms meaning roughly the same thing. The C in CPOE can stand for computerized, computer-based, or care as in care provider. Likewise, the P can refer to physician or provider to acknowledge the fact that non-physician caregivers are able to request orders for patients as well. Generally speaking, 
all three terms are used somewhat interchangeably. As we will see, before 2008, use of CPOE systems were used in less than 10% of hospitals. By 2014, three out of four hospitals used CPOE for medication orders, although much less are using CPOE for other types of orders. The traditional non-computerized way of placing orders sometimes involves a doctor verbally instructing a nurse or someone else on the healthcare team what orders are needed. Sometimes a unit clerk transcribes a doctor's voice recording of instructions. Sometimes a handwritten note, such as a prescription, may be used to communicate an order. Other times, a telephone conversation between two providers results in an order. Indeed, many times a note handwritten directly into the patient's chart is how a physician or provider may order a needed service for a patient. Traditionally, the process of placing orders has developed to be as convenient for the doctor as possible. Physicians who round on patients need to be efficient. Their workflows have evolved to maximize the amount of time they spend seeing patients. When CPOE is introduced, which requires them to directly enter their orders into a computer system, it can be very disruptive to their routines. Nevertheless, there are many benefits to CPOE. By the way, here is another example of the sort of prescription that can cause harm to a patient. While this prescription may be more legible than the last one we saw, there is still a serious problem. If not caught, this prescription could result in a severe overdose to the patient. In this case, the prescription was intended to be at the strength of 0.5 milligrams instead of 5 milligrams. A nurse or pharmacist working a busy schedule, which they all are, may misread the order as 5 milligrams, resulting in the patient receiving an overdose of 10 times the ordered dose. So what are the benefits of automating the ordering process? First, it makes poor penmanship completely irrelevant. All orders are entered into a computer and are therefore typed. When printed or read, legibility is not an issue. Second, unlike with a hard copy, the electronic order cannot be misplaced or submitted with incomplete information. An important bit of information frequently left off handwritten prescriptions is a patient's weight. This can be a problem for pediatric or geriatric patients who may need medicines formulated for their weight for maximum benefit and safety. Lastly, the order can be traced back to the provider very easily through the CPOE system. In hospitals where constant shift changes make it more difficult to determine which physician ordered a given test or drug, CPOE systems can reliably log exactly who ordered what and when. In a very well-cited article by Dr. David Bates and colleagues, a simple CPOE system was found to reduce drug errors by 55%. CPOE systems can be coupled with more complex systems, such as clinical decision support systems. These more complex systems can help intercept inappropriate doses, flag harmful drug-drug interactions, or flag an allergy that a particular patient has. These more sophisticated systems were found to reduce drug errors by 83% by the research team led by Dr. David Bates. So again, just to review, CPOE is something that you would find in a hospital inpatient setting. CPOE systems can handle all physician orders, not just medication orders. On the other hand, e-prescribing systems are used for drug order entry systems that are used in physician offices or in outpatient settings. The term e-prescribing generally refers to pharmacy orders only mainly because these are the most common type of orders in the outpatient setting. But it is important to note that outpatient information systems used by physicians can also include electronic capabilities to request other types of orders. Now to the history of CPOE. The first CPOE system 
was a system called MIS, or Medical Information System. This was developed by Lockheed Martin and installed at El Camino Hospital in California. Implementation of the system started in 1971 and took two years to complete. Once operational, physicians were able to order medications quickly with a few simple clicks. Interestingly, the MIS system eventually became the basis for the CPOE product sold by Eclipsis Corporation, which has since merged with all scripts. Early studies of this system found that it reduced the number of incomplete prescriptions to almost zero and significantly increased the number of radiology orders that included complete information, such as clinical indications. Despite the success of MIS in 1971, over a decade passed before more organizations began experimenting with CPOE installations. In 1984, an early pioneer was Wishard Memorial Hospital in Indianapolis. Wishard Memorial installed a CPOE system developed by the Regenstrief Institute. This CPOE system included an early clinical decision support system that triggered reminders or alerts when a physician would order a test or drug. Given that computers of this era were very slow compared to their modern counterparts, using the system required more time than using the traditional paper method because the slow computers needed to process a lot of information to provide decision support. Several years later, in 1986, the New York University Hospital installed an upgraded version of the MIS system originally used in El Camino Hospital. Studies of the system at NYU confirmed earlier studies demonstrating a reduction in incomplete orders and added some findings regarding faster turnaround times for pharmacy and laboratory orders. Much of the history discussed thus far was summarized in a 1994 article by Sittig and Stead. In their article, they reviewed all the published studies about CPOE through the early 1990s. This graph is an analysis of their bibliography. As can be seen, the number of published articles about CPOE was small in the 1970s. By the mid to late 1980s, however, a great deal of scholarly activity was developing around CPOE. Many of these studies tried to answer research questions about the impact of different implementation strategies for CPOE. Some of the research studies tried to address such questions as, should CPOE systems be rolled out all at once or in phases? Should all CPOE functions come online at the same time? Or should a bare-bones version be used first so that users can more slowly adapt to the new system? What institutional policies should be developed when CPOE is implemented? For example, if doctors are required to enter all orders themselves, what happens when a physician telephones an order, which is frequently the case? Hospitals need to think through the changes that occur as a result of CPOE and come up with policies that make sense for their institutions. How does an organization secure end-user buy-in when implementing such a costly system? Many early implementations, and even some today, were met with dissatisfaction with the system, especially among physician groups. Over the past 30 years, we have collectively learned a great deal about how to appropriately plan for CPOE, implement it, and support users, especially in the critical transition period. What is the best method for entering data? Early systems used hardwired computers centrally located, usually in nurses' stations. More modern systems utilize handheld devices or tablets which seem to be less disruptive to workflows. Ultimately, the lessons learned are very similar to any best practices we now know for many software development projects. Estimating CPOE adoption rates at any point in time has been a challenge. There are few routinely collected data sources that tell us which hospitals have CPOE and which hospitals do not. Depicted in this graph 
are results from various data sources, published by different authors that reported CPOE adoption by hospitals in 2002, 2003, and 2004. Common to all surveys is the fact that full CPOE adoption at this point was still pretty rare, with less than 10% of hospitals having it, even under the most generous estimation. Compounding the unreliability of national estimates of CPOE adoption is the fact that each researcher was using data that defined CPOE adoption slightly differently. For example, a given hospital can have a full CPOE system installed, but only in one wing of the hospital. Depending on how a question is asked on a survey, respondents may give different answers. Hence, you see the wide variability even in the same year when hospitals are surveyed about their CPOE status. It is also worth mentioning that while adoption is consistently low during this time frame, the number of hospitals considering implementation or who have partial systems implementations was much higher. Before we get back to our historical timeline, it is worthwhile to mention an important innovator namely the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or VA. The VA provides health care benefits to U.S. military veterans and their families. The VA system includes over 160 hospitals and more than 800 community clinics. The VA has a long and marked history with health IT in general. The system began nationwide adoption of CPOE between 1997 and 2002. The VA's Computerized Patient Record System, or CPRS, supports physician order entry and electronic note entry. By 2002, providers nationwide at VA hospitals and clinics entered over 90% of all pharmacy orders electronically. Today, the VA system is among the most wired and has served as an exemplar on how such a system can be deployed on a national level. The period from 1994 to 2004 was a time of significant growth in commercial CPOE systems. Previously, almost all CPOE systems were developed in-house by researchers and experts, most commonly in academic health centers. In contrast, during this time period, many hospitals started buying vendor-developed systems which were becoming increasingly available. In 2000, an organization called LeapFrog was established. This organization, a conglomerate of large Fortune 500 companies, collectively buys health insurance for their employees. Those employees represent a sizable proportion of Americans. Wanting to encourage hospitals to improve their quality, LeapFrog came up with a set of criteria that they wanted hospitals to follow in order to gain business from insurance companies representing LeapFrog-affiliated company employees. Adopting CPOE was among the suggested improvements. This was a concerted effort using market forces to encourage hospitals to engage in activities believed to improve quality. Hospitals were given credit for making leaps forward towards CPOE adoption with the use of decision support systems. Lastly, in the mid to late 2000s, there was an increased focus on studying the benefits of CPOE and the lessons learned from the many installations occurring around the country. 2005 marked a milestone year for CPOE, but this one was negative. In this year, a group of researchers from the University of Pennsylvania published an article suggesting that the CPOE implementation at their hospital was associated with an increase in medical errors. Unlike most of the homegrown systems appearing in the literature previously, this study examined the commercially available CPOE system and garnered much media attention. The article triggered a set of editorials and expert commentaries in the variety of HIT journals by many of the leading CPOE experts in the country. The entire series of events reminded us that the mere presence of a CPOE system does not improve care. Instead, CPOE systems need to be consistently updated and refined to take full advantage of lessons learned from how the system is used. As it turns out, by the time the article by the University of Pennsylvania's team was published, 
Their own system had been upgraded and refined and was no longer believed to have the problems that led to their research conclusions. Lastly, the attention received by this article resulted in the creation of a federal task force on unintended consequences with the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology. In addition to the push for CPOE from the LeapFrog Group, the High Tech Act that was part of the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 included incentives for EHR adoption and use of CPOE as a part of the meaningful use requirements. This led to a dramatic increase in the adoption of CPOE, a distinction between what is called a basic and comprehensive EHR has been made. In regard to CPOE, a basic EHR includes use of CPOE for medications, while a comprehensive EHR includes use of CPOE for medications, laboratory reports, radiology tests, consultations, and nursing orders. A comprehensive EHR also includes the use of clinical decision support such as clinical guidelines and a variety of drug interaction rules, such as drug-drug, drug-allergy, drug-lab, and drug-dosing support. Studies by the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology showed that by 2014, 76% of hospitals had adopted at least a basic EHR, and over 34% had adopted a comprehensive EHR. This concludes Lecture A of History of CPOE and E-Prescribing. In summary, we explained how the evolving capabilities of CPOE systems impact quality and patient safety in the hospital setting.